Howdy y'all, Los here. We're here for a garden tour of one of Austin's most awesome bonsai experts, Joseph McCoy. Let's check out his backyard right now. Come follow me, check it out. The man, Joey McCoy. Hello. <laughs> Say hello to the folks out there. Hello. This is Joey McCoy, Austin Bonsai Society. A bonsai practitioner of over 20 years, I'm gonna understand. In Austin Bonsai Society. Oh, yeah. in the Bonsai Society. So how long have you been doing it? Playing with little trees since about the mid 80s. Okay, so. mid 80s, and you look young. Like, what are you like? Uh, 100? I was. A, I, was <laughs> I was a little one then, though. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, and so you've been doing it for a very long time, and just looking around, I can already tell that we're gonna be in for a wonderful tree. First, first thing I actually see is the Miyagi style. Backyard garden is, is that was there any sort of um, inspiration for what you have right here? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's probably <laughs> I, I uh, as a kid that's that Especially was a in huge the 80s influence with yeah. the Karate Kid. Well, and I'll tell you, you know, uh, friends that I knew back then, uh, we all went to see the film, and there were all these these guys that were just like, I want to learn karate. I was like, I want to trim on little trees. Yeah, those, <laughs> those trees are awesome. The Forget balance. karate. <laughs> so, you know. And yeah, if, I wanted his backyard. <laughs> and if done right, no can defend. So, we're here at what he called the, the Shohin yes, area. Yes, it's the little Shohin Hill. Shohin Hill? Mm -hmm. Shohin Hill. <laughs> yeah, you put on a map, like this place will be like a way bigger one day and Shoheen Hill right that here. Right. <laughs> and I can see you're just a big fan of boxwoods and elms. And I can tell you, I love Chinese elms. Can you remember the first species that you were working on? No. Uh, <laughs> it was probably something I collected though, and that didn't live very long. Okay. Yeah. When you're a kid, you, you, you go through a bunch of stuff. Do you happen to have like a like something that's been with you like well a long time? Long, long time. God, you would ask me that. Yeah. Usually it's like, what's your first bone site? And do you still have it? But uh, you get doing well, it that long. I mean, I think I've had this guy. I think there's a gas line near here. So just careful for these flags here. <laughs> Actually, the flags are, they indicate they're not my tree. So ah. <laughs> Water, water those carefully, and you'll see a bunch of the flags around here. Um, so this, not this guy, but this one back here, I've had for over 20 years. Wow. And how did that start out? Looking like a... Uh, well, it was, it, was a, <clears throat> it was a tree that was collected in a cemetery by a friend of mine in, in San Antonio. And, uh, and it was in a wooden box that was full of fire ants and was falling over. <laughs> so I won it in the first... Uh, Austin Bonsai auction. Yeah, I've never seen a boxwood like tree in the wild. You never really, normally I normally see them as like nice bushes. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there's no boxwoods native to Texas, of course, or to America. America, mm -hmm. okay. But um, you will find them when there's old homesteads, you know, where something just kind of goes crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and I've run across some of those. Unfortunately, with them, they've been allowed to kind of go nuts. They end up with just straight trunks, <clears throat> like most trees do. Um, it's the ones that are in people's yards that have been trimmed, hacked, and, yeah, and, they, and worked on. Yeah, those those are, are the fun ones. They're the most interesting. And I've always said, I always feel like these guys smell like uh, like a cat pee or something. <laughs> That's the common thing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if yep. you so if you like if you crush the leaves, there's there's a little more of that smell ish. It's a little more of a kind of a acidic maybe. I don't know. A little bit citrus. I, I don't get the whole thing. It's the cat piece. Does that happen to be, would you call that your favorite species to work on? Probably, yeah. I really enjoy it. And it's, I mean, Austin's growing so fast. Homes are switching over all the time. And houses from the 750s to the 80s or so, people are coming in and they're just taking out all the landscaping. And it's these beautiful old trunked specimens that just end up going to the, the dump. It just kills We them. know that because we dug up the holly. Yeah. 
Now, do you happen to have that holly still? I do not. That holly did not make it through summer. All right. Ours is still kicking, baby. <laughs> Success for Los. When something's collected, I usually give it three years. The first year is just for the roots. I'll let anything grow that wants to grow. Maybe suckers I'll take off. Uh, second year, I'll kind of look at some of the branches and let them take off. Maybe the third year, I'll start styling. All right, you heard that. <laughs> a little pro tip. Enough <laughs> containers to work with. And as you see, like when you get to a point, you, you stop getting trees and you start focusing on containers at some point. You I'm never sure. have the right container. There, so it doesn't right. hurt to have extras. And whenever you go to convention, it's, it's dangerous to go to a convention. <laughs> and then add that by 20 years, it's like, end up with some fun stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. And I see you've got a brassica here. Yeah, is that the one you were talking about? It, it's not. It's one of the is, ones. This is one of them. Yeah, one of the little... I don't think you're ever going to see this. Nigel Saunders, eat your heart out. <laughs> uh, cabbage bonsai. Who knew? <laughs> cabbage bonsai. <laughs> How funny is that? Yeah, and, it's working. I mean, and they prune and they, they work. But, you know, if it ever starts making those little cabbage uh, balls, I'll usually pinch that out right away. I don't want it to do that. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. of course, if it ever goes to flower, I'll take that off as well. But I just, I treat it like a succulent at this point. You know, it it kind of has a woody-ish stem. It's yeah. not wood. Oh but, yeah, absolutely. But I Very can like Schaflera fillin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. that to those who are into uh, a succulents, I would kind of put this in the same world. I didn't even look around behind here. Mm -hmm. Nice clumpy. That's one of the Texas State Bonsai Exhibit trees. That was designed by Sheila Ward. And that's something you would probably get a bunch of seedlings and gather them up at the bottom there and just let them... Exactly. They've been fused for, I don't know how long she had, she had been working on it, 20, 30 years. Fortunately, it has a little bit of leaf scorch because we've had such horrible summer. Um, this was collected by a guy up in Dallas in the uh, from a homestead from the 1800s. So it may have been one of the first... Get out. Boxwood shrubs planted in the state of Texas. It's not the biggest tree. I would put a little tiny plaque right here. Yeah. <laughs> If you have friends that are potters, um, sometimes there's a failure in the in the firing, so you get a crack. And this one in particular, it was made by May Lau in our club, Austin, mm -hmm. Texas, and it had a firing crack all the way through it, and she wasn't sure if it was usable. And so what I've done is I've repaired it with a hammered staple technique. And oh, so mm -hmm, these mm -hmm. are these are set down in there, and they're actually into the pot itself. And um, what's and the other flush. side look like over here? Oh, okay, yeah, I gotcha. Oh, over here. I'm sorry. So, yeah, I put a um, uh, oh god, what is that called? I actually don't do this anymore, but it's a it's a um, like a stone epoxy kind of thing. Mm -mm. It's a cement, actually. It's a uh, it's a cement you'd fix for uh, like swimming pools and, and fish ponds. Um, I forget the name of it. Do right you know now. what? The, like a hydraulic cement? Hydraulic cement. There That's we go. He does. He's hey. a, so, he's a, <laughs> so yeah. Hydraulic so, cement? Is that <laughs> what it's called? Yeah. I think I put like a, a fiberglass under here and then put hydraulic cement over the top of it just to try to make it a sealed uh, deal. Yeah. I don't actually use that anymore because it takes up a little room. I found that just the hammered copper will hold it in, in place enough. And what you need to have is something on, <clears throat> on the outside to... Uh, to hold the outward expansion <coughs> of the roots. Uh, it's a little uglier when it's on a glazed pot. And then this one I did a I did a glue technique that did, wasn't quite as pretty. I wasn't gonna show that one, but there's the blue oxidation that'll, that'll yeah. happen. But it repairs, so. My award-winning trees. <laughs> That's a Podocarpus. Uh, Podocarpus, yeah. One best tropical down in the Buddha pine, East. right? Buddhist pine, yeah. Buddhist pine. Not, not a pine tree. You know, a lot of people like to. 
Or uh, Buddha, uh, Japanese U sometimes. It's Japanese not, U, that's what I've heard. So, how does a backyard start off at this journey where you're at now? Because you said this was all grass lot pretty much, and you've built a complete um, pond here and all this upsloped um, pathways. I mean, how does it even begin? Where do you even start with something like this? It's that journey of a thousand steps. You gotta start. Yeah, so, you know, you, you begin by just placing something down and then you're figuring out, I need this. And so as you're watering, you say, oh, well, you know, it'd be much nicer if I wasn't walking in dirt, you know, that's, that's turning into mud. So you begin to make pathways. And then uh, I had a lot of wooden benches for a long time. And as you see, most of them are cinder block and metal at this point, because I got real tired of things collapsing on me. Oh boy, that <laughs> that's... doesn't hold true. Yeah, and so where would you, uh, think that what would you say would be the first bonsai area? Everyone has their little area that they start off with, or their bench, their first bench. Probably around the pond <clears throat> originally, and then it sort of branched out to this this little zone right here, and then so you sort of, of like had it coming up and. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it as you can imagine, it's sort of amoeba like. You know, if you've got the space, bonsai will take yeah, over. Oh, if you're of the mind, of so. course. <laughs> Mine's already starting to do that. It starts off in a little corner in the backyard. And then, you know, you get the greenhouse that can't go there, so it goes there. That's right. And then things go beyond the greenhouse, and I'm sure the whole backyard is going to be, like, Bolloff's backyard in a couple of years. But, yeah, at some point, you're like, I'm going to build a pond back here. And yeah. you found all the stone. Did you have the idea of building the pond first, or were you just serendipitously found the, the stones and you knew what you wanted to do with them? Well, so it's kind of a weird story. Right where the round pond is, that was a barbecue pit. And there's, you can see the door down at the bottom. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I did yeah. see that. So it was this big barbecue cooker. And um, I'm 35 year vegetarian, so I was on a barbecue cooker. You doing tofu in there? <laughs> and it started kind of crumbling and falling down. And so. Uh, one summer I decided, all right, you know, rock hammer and take it apart. And I took all the stones and took all the concrete off of it and was like, all right, I'm making a fish pond here. And this sort of teardrop shape was a garden at one time. There was a frog pond I built in the middle and there was a giant palm tree actually growing up in through the trees. <laughs> uh, and we had a bad freeze, the palm tree died, the frog pond had a leak. And I thought, what are we going to do? And then, so I had the shape, well, just excavate dig it all out and then yeah put in concrete and rebar and alakazam so cool <laughs> yeah i mean i've got a backyard yeah uh, yeah and it's just time i mean you don't do everything at once you take a little it's it bites you know you've been yeah. someplace long enough you should make it customized to yourself yeah so you took apart that barbecue and then you then you put this together mm -hmm. and then it starts moving off this way where you have this deck area right here. I guess we we'll go through here. Yeah, I oh, think sure. the yeah, little... well, that was a um, project during the pandemic, actually. The boardwalk, I call it. This right here. Well, so the, the, the rock had been here for, I, mean, I don't know, I built this in the 90s, I guess. Uh -huh. But the end over there between the two trees was starting to crack and crumble. And it was very dangerous. Oh, okay. Because the trees will lift anything in your way. And so this was a very dangerous spot to walk around. And I always worried about visitors. I mean, there were pieces missing and stuff, you know, a foot up. So, um, <laughs> Lowe's had plastic wood for sale, which inspired me to say, hey, you know, <laughs> hey, that's not going to rot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And then this is just chain link fence um, posts and, and handholds. You built this awesome little deck, but first, uh, mm -hmm. this this pine you got here. It's a it is a weeping uh, deodar cedar. Weeping deodar cedar. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. added material. And ha have you had this tree in the ground for long? Uh, yeah, probably since the mid '90s or so. And I didn't even know if this would live here. This is, you know, we don't have cedars in, in America. This is from the Middle East, and it's a weeping variety. Um, and it's also not given a whole lot of sun, which I think is what saved it. Because I, I think our Texas sun probably would have scorched it. It can take the the cold no problem. Oh yeah, yeah. 
not that a problem. Heat. That's what they can't take. Yeah, right. they got a good spot. Yeah, thank you. They've got a great spot to live right there. When I built this, I called this the Eye of Horus because it looks like an eyeball. We're in Monkey Pole Isle here, this <laughs> row of monkey poles, which you can see we've got the plastic wood here, which I think is a great idea, and I'm going to use that. And it's probably, it's probably not as cheap as wood, but... More expensive, yeah, but it'll last. It'll last. You pay a little more for a lot longer. Exactly. And if you want, if you didn't like the look of the plasticness, you can cap it with some natural wood. Sure. Why not? Absolutely. setting where we're in right now is kind of this dappled light that not a lot of bonsai are going to be real happy with. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of broadleaf trees conifers can't handle as well. But um, your uh, broadleaf evergreens like this do pretty well and boxwoods in particular can take shade. And so in this large space there's not a whole lot of other things I could grow in here. I've got most of my sunny trees. Of course we're in the middle of summer telling you this. So yeah. <laughs> that's also a hellscape right now. But um, yeah, I can feel the heat from it right now. It's it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> it'll get you. Uh, no, but uh, the other thing is, uh, they find me. I mean, I'm I find opportunities to collect uh, from urban places all the time. And uh, in Austin, Texas, it's typically something like Yopan Hollies and boxwoods. Yeah. And I, I I'm not a kind of person where I say, well, oh, I have three boxwoods. I don't want a fourth one because they're all different. I mean, you style them differently. You can do anything you want with them. You can make forests, you can do cascades, you can do big old uh, uh, broom styles. You can do you deadwood know. on you them. You can do deadwood. There's no reason you can't do that. So um, the more you play with, the more enjoyment you get with them. And so why not? Do you ever just like see like a, a, a bush and you're like, stop at their house. Hey, you guys looking to get rid of that thing? It's pretty... Oh God, yes. Yeah? I ask people all the time. Okay. Yeah. Usually it's something where it was it was planted in the wrong place and you can tell the person's like having to drag their hose around it in an uncomfortable way or something. And you know, it's not it's not along the edges of the house, but it's kind of sticking out about six feet. That's, that's, that's out of place there. And you go, <laughs> hey, I can help you get rid of that. That's I'm... right. I'll, I'll be here with a group of guys. We'll take it out. You won't even have to worry about it. A great example is this big guy. So yeah, I'm, I'm on 45th Street, um, going over to Upper Crest Bakery to get a, a cake for my brother's birthday. And I look over and I see that this boxwood, which was once a big ball, has had a big branch on this side broken off. And now I see this sort of semi-cascade shape. And my brain turns off from cake mode into bonsai mode and oh my god I have to pull over right now and so <laughs> I talked to the people and I said let me ask you a question this is kind of odd I do bonsai and you have this fantastic old boxwood out there and they said ah oh, that yeah we hate it we keep hitting it with our car uh, they're they're renters though and they're like we can't give you permission let me but I'll give you the owner's uh, phone number she calls me back and she's like oh god absolutely take it you want that um, found out it was at the time I think 70 years old and that's about 15 years now so maybe an 85 year old tree wow um, you can see its age yeah yeah so and if I hadn't done that now the whole place has been scraped to the ground and it's been zero escaped and there's cactus every place so that would have been the end of this this beautiful plants journey so I feel like I lucked out I think she feel like feels like she lucked out too because you know she got that off her property. You're a lucky guy. Well, I mean, <laughs> you're a lucky guy. <laughs> Keep your eyes open and clean living. <laughs> clean living. I don't know. There you go. Clean living and asking permission. Mm -hmm. 